everyone here today uh, for our stakeholder meeting. Mr. Cazarelli, you want to come up to the, just kind of sit up here by me in case we have some questions later. Um, we're really excited. Uh, we, we finalized what we needed to to kind of uh, get this meeting together uh, with all the stakeholders to discuss the design phase uh, of this just this incredible facility um, down on Cortland Avenue that we've been working on uh, for, for a little while now, especially the concepts. Um, so again, I welcome all of you here, uh, board members, parents, teachers, coaches, students, uh, everyone in the community. Uh, we really uh, thank you for coming. Uh, councilmen uh, that are here, councilwomen, this is not a board of education project per se. This is a community project. That's what it was about since the beginning. One of the, one of the promises that um, made to the board seven years ago, and I think all the board members that have worked with us since I've been here at least, uh, I could at least say that uh, that much, is that our ideal situation, uh, what we call curricular, extracurricular, co-curricular activities, is to get the students, the children, the future of Belleville Everything that any other student can have across the state. I just had a meeting. It was just a meeting for a few hours with a, with a major company who wants to partner with us uh, with some other things we were doing. We we're talking about all the great things that are coming here, uh, including some of the, the future projects that we have ready to go uh, that hopefully we'll be partnering with um, soon with some other entities and also with sustainable projects that we've been working on. And, and these are things that People in Belleville, or students in Belleville, or even when I grew up across the river here, my friends from Belleville, never thought that anyone in this area could have. Um, things that we're doing now with greenhouses, farm to table projects, was always unheard of here. Those are things that happened up in the north and down in the south, right? Aquaponics, we have aquaponics now in almost every one of our schools, right? People maybe don't know that, but we have to try to promote that a little better. That's what this is about. One of the things you also realized around here, in this area, was that there are no avenues or vehicles for our children, our students, even our adults, to utilize indoor facilities for their health and wellness or for their training, uh, unless we rent it and we take a bus or a car somewhere. Then you might say, well, my kid doesn't play sports, and you know, it's not, that's not what it's about. Not only is it about the physical aspect of it or the social-emotional well-being of our children and ourselves, it's also about community, it's about coming together, it's about building these relationships and these connections. And that's why we're all here, that's why it's, it's your voice tonight, not my voice, not the board's voice. We had to put together a concept, obviously, right, we couldn't bring, I couldn't bring the board to the board or to the community something that just was a blank shell, so we brought a concept. So it took us a little bit of time to find an area of the community that could be utilized for this purpose. We needed something big. We don't want to start with anything small. It took us some time and we did stumble upon an incredible partner who couldn't make it tonight but did say he wished he was here and he, and he, he is very uh, excited about the relationship um, that he's having with the board and the community as a whole with something like this. So again, it started there, we found it, we talked about concepts, we talked about possibilities, we talked about obviously pricing. We also talked about how we would pay for this, how we would have sponsorships with this. These are all the things that went into working for a, a center or an indoor facility like this that already were being contacted by outside agencies, by outside groups that want to utilize this when our students aren't using it. So, so again, not only as a revenue source to help offset it, but just something that we could collectively say is really just for the betterment of the community. Because that's what this is all about, right? All the things that, that we've talked about, um, at least in my time here, and I know other people also talk about making things better here, okay? Um, the architect on the project is the owner's architect, Mr. Bobby Cazzarelli, who's from town, which makes it even easier for us. Um, so sitting down with him, talking with him, uh, and the owner about putting some things together that we need. I have to say I appreciate you and Mr. Stern, who hopefully is watching tonight with our other live stream individuals out there, um, because I think you really have come across the other side or to the, across the aisle, whatever you want to say, um, in making this partnership and, and really opening it up to some of the things that we needed. The idea was to sit down in these concept meetings that we had and try to think of everything we possibly could that would help uh, 
satisfy things that we needed to train in an indoor facility. So that's what you're going to see tonight. You're going to see concept drawings. You're going to see other things that we've talked about. I'll talk about some of it. And then the whole idea is to have me stop talking and to have you all get up and talk about what this should be like, what this should be, the design should be like. This is, this is the time to have that type of stakeholder meeting, what those things should, should uh, include, um, what maybe should be taken out, what are some of the things that we missed. Nobody, nobody said I knew it all. Uh, I have helped design facilities like this before. Um, but again, you know, there, there could be um, things that we're missing. So, uh, this incredible infographic that um, was made, Ms. Kelher and someone else, I want to thank for all the uh, snacks as well and stuff like that. So, I'm going to go through a quick presentation, then we're going to open it up, and then really is um, your time to talk and, and let's get some feedback on it. Um, so, this is down in Cortland Avenue. Um, what you see here is the entire uh, facility, the warehouse facility, uh, and I'll post this presentation online. And, and if, we have plenty of seats up front if you guys can't see it. So um, we decided to leave the lights on, I guess, so that we can see this the way. To, I don't know. I, I, why don't we try to turn them off, maybe? Well, then how are we going to? I want to thank Jeff and everybody, too, for helping us out tonight. Uh, maybe if it's a little dark, we might be able to see it a little better. Um, but anyway, this is the entire warehouse facility. Um, there's National Window. Is that the company that's down here? Is that what it's called? That, sorry, National Lighting. I just, just passed Dorwin. National Lighting is in that, in that vicinity too. So just to give you an idea, if you, that's been a staple company here for, for years. Um, and the gray area, this gray, well, I thought Jeff said this was going to work. I guess it's not really working too well. This grayed out area right here is basically the 25, almost 25,000 square feet of space. Thanks, Jeff, that's better. 25,000 square feet that, we, feet that we plan on renting out in the facility to make an indoor facility here, um, which we've been working uh, with Mr. Cosrelli and Mr. Stern on. Uh, so tonight we're going to review the original concepts, like I said, and talk about what we have in mind, what's in there already. Um, discuss the plans for the utilization of the facility, which I've kind of touched on a little bit, but um, maybe get into a little bit more in depth. Uh, then I want your feedback, um, design needs and ideas, and then any questions, concerns, or suggestions. Um, basically, this stakeholder meeting, as I have explained, is um, bas basically drills in on the design phase and as we're moving forward. So those are the questions that will be probably answering and, and taking tonight in the, 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 the suggestions. So the original concepts, um, again, we try to incorporate everything we could, understanding that recreation sports and other things, all the high school sports would need it, uh, and some of the clubs and, and other curricular activities we were doing. So, so the first, uh, as you look at the facility now, a little bit more taken apart um, or scrubbed. We're going to scrub the data, like I always say, for all my administrators in here. Um, this is the actual um, facility that, and the concept drawing that uh, Mr. Cosrelli and I and a few others came up with, with all the, the needs of our athletic program and, and some of the other uh, internal things that we think we need in, in uh, district. So first, in the middle of the, uh, the facility we'll, we, is, a, uh, is a turf area, which we'll talk about. But in this area here, we are going to have retractable batting cages. Okay, right now we have uh, four established. They'll be up in the ceiling, and they'll be they will come down when needed. Uh, that will service our softball, baseball populations, uh, especially you know when it's winter months. For those of you who have ever uh, been involved with those sports, you know that when you rent these facilities out, um, they get pretty expensive. And all of our neighboring towns that do this and that are budgeted for it um, are always one step ahead of us, uh, competitively, team-wise. But also, again, getting kids out, getting kids doing things instead of sitting around uh, inside when it's cold and, and uh, not being able to get on the fields yet. It also does save uh, maintenance on fields because if you're in, a, if you open up a batting cage on a, on a grassy area when it's uh, winter, it's it's really bad for field repair. We still do have some grassy areas that we would utilize um, in those situations. On the outside um, of the facility is the outdoor basketball court, which is the brainchild of Mr. Cazzarelli, which is something that we definitely want 
um, our students to experience. Um, again, this is how we're going to get basketball incorporated in here. Um, it should be a full, almost a full court size outdoor. We're talking about coverings and stuff like that. Those are some things that we're talking about, but nice little outdoor area, especially in the summer. Um, it'll work out really well. Obviously, in the winter months, it's, it's most likely not going to be open until possibly talked about maybe down the road and closing it or, or something like that. But right now, this is the immediate um, partial of that. On the, on the one side, in between the basketball courts and those retractable uh, cage units are speed and agility lanes um, for strength training, um, for, I'm sorry, for speed training, for uh, sprinters, for possibly work on indoor track and outdoor track, um, and just, you know, overall ath um, athletic trials, athleticism, uh, et cetera. On the outside is a jogging track. We talked about possibly opening that up to the public um, on the cold nights. Uh, when you can't get outside, if people want to walk afterwards, you know, come down to the facility. Uh, the board is not adverse to opening up and, and, and letting our community walk that. Obviously, it's your facility too. We're not sure how long that's going to be yet. If it's a, if it's a, a mile, I don't think it will be. But, um, but again, it's just a place to go. It'll be a nice surface and stuff we're working on now. Uh, obviously, you could probably do a light run around there as well. It's all according to what's happening in the middle. Uh, this turf training area, which also extends up when the cages are up, right? So I probably should have extended that box out a little bit, is basically open training. Right now we have two soccer nets there, uh, but you could probably get um, some soccer training in there, obviously some, some baseball, softball drills, really any type of speed, strength, and agility stuff that you need to do on turf. Um, again, uh, football, some football tactical stuff, et cetera. Uh, also in there is going to be our junior ROTC drilling area. Uh, and we also were talking about drone racing. So we have a, a drone program here. So that whole area opens up to all these different things that are retractable from the ceiling. So the drone racing, if you've never seen that, has big rings and boxes and stuff, and, and that would come down from the ceiling as well. This side, um, closest to where the second, secondary part of the facility is, will have three rock walls. We're trying to get three rock walls on there. Um, good for coordination, uh, obviously good for strength, especially for, uh, for our younger students. Um, these aren't you know, 50, feet, 50 foot rock walls, but they're just uh, good for some strength and endurance. Again, open it up to a fun night for kids uh, with parents there, et cetera. Uh, with running some activities, these are some of the things that we have planned, um, like an open gym night. One of the key um, proponents of this uh, facility was to put together wrestling rooms. For those of you who aren't familiar with the high school, at least wrestling right now, um, and the rec department uses it as well, we wrestle now in our cafeteria. Um, which used to be the library, I guess, before I got here. Um, to wrestle in a cafeteria uh, for the seven years I've been here now has bothered me almost every day it's happened. Um, I'm a big proponent of wrestling, um, wrestlers in my family. I'm not a big proponent of, of students wrestling and then we eat the next day or eat before. I'm just not a big proponent of that. So we've been trying to work on a wrestling room um, that was comparable to all the wrestling rooms I've been in uh, even just in Essex County. You know, in Essex County, there's, there's full rooms dedicated to this sport because in certain towns like Belleville, there is a lot of be uh, wrestling prowess here. Um, there are, there are um, schools, there are private schools here for wrestling. We have a, a large rec department uh, program, which we're hoping to help grow um, at some point. But this consists of a large, right now, again, conceptual, and I know hopefully there's some wrestling people here tonight that we can hear of. We have enough room to have a large mat and then we put together eight or nine or more, 10 maybe, um, practice uh, circles. So just an idea to open that up. Um, and that would be the wrestling room <coughs> that we would also utilize for recreation. And what that does immediately for us is it allows us now to basically redo the cafeteria area down here, our second cafeteria, make it more like a cafeteria instead of having wrestling mats on the wall um, that need to be scrubbed down, et cetera. Um, so that's, that's really a plus for us here. 
Workout cardio room, <clears throat> again, just design concept. How do you have a facility like that and not have a cardio room? We have a cardio room up here at the high school, something that we want to either emulate down here or switch, maybe offset. We're not really sure yet. Uh, one of the things that's been really interesting that I've been working on for the past month now um, that we knew this was going through was getting sponsorships. So through vendors um, and uh, 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 getting the assistance of a consultant, uh, we do have a lot of individuals that are interested in sponsoring certain rooms, which they would either put equipment in for us or, or help towards um, the rent, uh, et cetera. So all these revenue streams are things. So one of the things we're talking about is the so-and-so cardio room, right? So, so that would be something that uh, you know, uh, we're looking forward to because, again, these are big partnerships. These aren't little sponsorships we're talking about. We're talking about major companies, sports programs, et cetera that really want to get into is because of the connection to the community, because of the connection to the social emotional well-being and wellness of students, not just a batting cage, right? It's a, it's a whole, it's a whole, um, it's going to be an entire operation down here. Okay, like open up, open all day, all night, um, manned by, you know, some type of administration, um, you know, custodial, security, all that stuff. So all those things kind of get incorporated. <clears throat> and we lost the slide here, Jeff, I think. Oh, maybe not. Hang on, what's going on? Um, what did I say? Okay, there it is. So there is, right next to the wrestling room, <clears throat> if you kind of, you know, when we finally do complete this and you all take a tour of it, we, you, the way it connects is just incredible, the way Mr. Cazzarelli has a, have all the rooms connecting, is a cheer dance aerobics studio. Okay, we wanted to incorporate aerobics, Tai Chi, all these things we talked about to help um, again, community members, not so much just our students, but everybody uh, run classes, et cetera, um, for different, different um, members of the community. <clears throat> this is an, a, a, a nice size area. Uh, obviously, our cheerleaders are going to use this, all levels, um, along with our other facilities as well. Um, but even our dance program, we're still trying to build that dance program up here. Um, so that'll open up for, for some of that and uh, maybe some adult classes for yoga, some wellness there, et cetera. Um, I'm not really a yoga guy myself. I don't know if you guys could tell, but um, I don't know. why are you laughing? I don't know. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, the bottom area is, is really actually impressive. Uh, when Mr. Cazzarelli first put this in the plans, I was like, yeah, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But when you actually go down in this space and see how big it is, it's it's really going to be an incredible thing. It's our strength and conditioning area. We have treadmills in there for our runners and just for normal physical fitness, but you know, for our running teams and, and all of our other athletes and students. Uh, we have, I think in here, Mr. Cos really put 12 rowing machines for our row team. Um, you know, so, so that during the winter they can practice. Um, there's, you know, free weights. It, the, the, the space is really incredible and it's just, something that the community deserves, something that our kids definitely deserve, and, and we're really excited about it. But you see how it runs that whole span there, and, and this picture doesn't do it any justice, but it really is just an incredible space. And then beyond that, there's room to put some more speed training lanes in there, um, safely, obviously, uh, and we were talking about putting some partitions in there, or however we're gonna do it, or, or maybe not there, but. Uh, but some more lanes, you know, for some speed training and things like that. Um, and again, you still have the turf. You still have the training lanes on the other side. Um, just a lot, of, a lot of opportunities for our kids to just excel. Um, you know, physical fitness um, definitely strengthens your mind as well. Um, and uh, again, open it up to community, community groups, you know, coaches and clubs that want to rent a facility. Um, those things, because there's nothing like this around here. There really isn't. <clears throat> okay, so this this is this is just like an idea of what it might look like, but this isn't it. This is I stole this picture, but you know, you know, just things happening all over, right? <clears throat> um, utilization of this. Who's going to utilize it? Well, you know, we have some conceptual drawings of what it's going to look like with the machines and the you know the, you got your um, retractable cages. This thing is not working. Good retractable cages and stuff like that coming down there and then again open up turf area but obviously all the district sports teams would utilize this in the off season and that's we're already looking to procure a, uh, a management system 
where either the teams through Mr. Mara uh, or the rec department or people that want to rent out a space can actually go online and do that. Uh, we've already looked at uh, a system for that. Um, so it's open up to all those, those sports teams, like I said, drone racing, ROTC drilling, the wellness of the entire community, the physical wellness. Uh, we're looking at liabilities for, you know, opening it up to just the people that come and work on treadmills and stuff. But, you know, we, we also don't want to take away some from private, in, private businesses, Signature Fitness is right there. Um, recreation teams, open gym nights, and then obviously rentals uh, to help offset the cost of this. Um, this facility, which I already, I can't really talk about some of the um, people that have reached out to me for rentals, but there's things I haven't even thought of that people want to use the facility for, which would occur late at night. Um, even the area of town where we would be open up later, it, there's not, not much residential down there, so it's actually perfect. This isn't going to be a hangout for kids, it's not, that's not what it is. Um, the groups that we're talking about are men's leagues, women's leagues, um, you know, people work during the day and then they need to, you know, they want to do something inside the facility. Some really interesting things I didn't know actually happened out there uh, in these facilities. Uh, some of these recreational sports that would just fit this perfectly. And, and I think some of these, uh, these clubs are, uh, you know, really willing to pay some of the fees that we're going to be putting out there. The board's looking at that structure now. Okay, so now we're going to look for your opinion on these areas, so this is a time to kind of just, yeah, just, um, well, we don't need the lights on, Jeff, sorry, because no, because I, I just want you to pass the microphone around. Um, we want to we know what you think about certain areas, what you think should go in there. Um, again, if you don't feel comfortable now talking about it, that's fine. You could, you could, you could send us something, but we just want to really open it up to a, a dialogue on the design phase, uh, et cetera. So the first thing that we wanted to talk about is that area for the retractable, um, oh no wait, I'm sorry, this is the jogging area. This is the jogging area. So the first thing we're talking about is the jogging area. Um, what am I talking about? Yeah, the whole area, the jogging area and that those retractable, um, thank you, the retractable cages, um, the open area down there where you can do soccer or other things, and the speed and agility area, um, et cetera. So if anybody has anything that you think should definitely be in there, uh, we'd love to hear it now. So Jeff here has the microphone, so anyone? Coaches, anything? Yep. Good, okay, indoor golf nets. Um, definitely we were, we were talking about that. Okay, yeah, I think again, uh, something for indoor golf, maybe something like that in the area. Double as, yeah, the band cages, maybe we could, yeah, those haven't been designed yet, so maybe we could design those to double that, but yeah, definitely. Yes, sir. A different netting, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, so, so just, Mr. Cosarelli has an answer, I think, for that. But just before we even do that, just so you know, all the equipment, we, we haven't done anything with equipment yet. That's what this meeting's about. So that's exactly what we're looking for, Coach. We're looking for distances. We're looking for netting stuff, things of that nature. So did you want to say something? Oh, oh yeah, you take that. You're a guest, so. Yeah, th thank you, everyone. Yeah, what, what you're looking at on the batting cages and all the equipment, we uh, took the time to try and find out. We did some quick research to find out, you know, how, how big a batting cage should be and the size of a, you know, a net there for, for the soccer. So what you're looking at is pretty realistic in, in size and equipment, what's going to fit there. That room's approximately 11,000 square feet. To wrap your head around that a little bit, maybe it looks like the size of this auditorium. You know, so there's there's a lot of activities that are going to go on in that in that space. But coach, I, you know, we'll, we can make sure that there's adequate room for pitching. 
and I believe that it's already representing that now. We can, we can uh, double check that. Yeah, when we first put that in, that was one of the things we talked about, because we also talked about, for baseball, the, you know, the raised mounds, the portable mounds, and stuff like that, but, but the, the 60 feet is probably the number we need to be at, and mm -hmm. uh, obviously once we get all that stuff before we order, Mr. Marrow will talk to all the coaches, make sure we get the right equipment we want, and stuff like that. Did that answer your question, Coach, or? Understood. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's that's that, that's the beauty of this. This is your space, and we can do we can make adjust this any way you need it. Right. Anyone else? Yeah, Mr. Sheldon. Go ahead, Jeff. Oh. I'll put one on, I guess. Yep. Okay. You can put them on then. I think we're, we're probably pretty good. Do you have a, a question or you need your notes? Well, I have one thing I'm just curious about what's going on below. You have design notes or other notes? I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> I figure you did. I think they're waiting outside. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. I have, no, I don't need. I, I know. I know it pretty well. Okay. I know. I've I've been at the facility, so I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, I was going to go back to show you. I mean, to show everybody what you're talking about. So. Oh, okay. You have to. You have to take. You have to use the mic, Mr. Sheldon. Nobody can hear you. Oh, I could, we could use this one right here. So, Mr. Sheldon, just because Mr. Sheldon's said a few things already, so just to, to keep everybody up with what's happening. Um, so, this, this is part of the facility. I did not know Mr. Cozzarelli or Mr. Stern in 2020. I wish I did because we've been looking for a place like this. We could have easily done this years ago. Um, 
So we, we obviously thought of all those things, the safety, the area. Um, as far as I'm concerned, there's only really storage there. I could be wrong, but I'm sure there's like, but I'm pretty sure all the times I've been inside, there's only storage there. The board's toward the building as well. Um, and, and I'm not going to say what's in there because it's really not my business. It's no one's business, but it's, it's nothing like, um, it's, like a, it's like a really big Costco. Let's just leave it at that, okay, in these other areas. So there's, there's really not much happening. Now, out in the, in the parking area and whatnot, yes. Um, but uh, we've been assured that some of that's going to be moving away, some of those trucks, because there are the area we took over, that'll vacate those trucks, et cetera. Um, however, this area of the outdoor court, um, we want to incorporate basketball in here somehow, and, and we do have uh, enough ceiling height for, for, for many of the projects we're doing, but just not basketball or volleyball. So the way we could incorporate that was to take this one area of a loading dock area and secure it so that we can utilize the outside. So that's an outside loading dock area. It's raised off the ground. Uh, it really wouldn't come in contact with anything except our own facility. The main thing, and actually we worked very hard on this, Mr. Cazzarelli and myself, was the safety of the community and, and everybody. We wanted to keep them completely away from the industrial area. So the entrance now is going to be on the other, which is that um, right next to the DPW, there's a driveway. So that'll be our driveway, our parking, and our entrance. So our students, our community, nobody even has to go to the back on Cortland and um, Bella Vista, right? Right. I'm sure for variance purposes and the planning board and whatnot, I'm sure that there's multiple uses who knew at the time who Mr. Stern was going to partner with. I think it's probably smart to say that if you're zoned for a certain reason, I would probably say we're, we're intending to rent to anybody in that zone, but what's there now is not what you just quoted. I'm not saying that it wasn't true. It's just not there. I think the main thing to reiterate, too, is the fact that it is contiguous. It is you walk in there. And every, you don't have to go outside, everything's connected. That was an important thing. We talked about corridors, making sure kids were safe on the inside. Everybody's going to swipe in, so we have a record of who's there. We're not really sure how that's going to work yet, when it's going to be open. People are going to swipe in, we're going to have security guards. No one's, no one's getting out unless they get out through the front. Obviously, we'll have egress. There's already fire suppressant system in there. It's, really, it's, actually, really, it's actually really designed for, for something like this. It's, it's perfect. Um, new HVAC system going in. Um, so all those things have been kind of you know, thought of. So. Well, just to get back to the point I was trying to make a few moments ago about the outdoor, outdoor basketball court, in order to facilitate that, as Mr. Casarelli acknowledged, you're going to have to dismantle uh, some of the loading docks that are in existence there. But those loading docks may be necessary for some of the other businesses that may move into this facility down the road. You have to look at the whole site plan for the build this complex to realize how much additional structure is wrapped around the proposed use for the board of ed. Now, actually, you know, right to the uh, bottom left side, there, there are at least, let me see how many units. I wish we could have a slide showing the, the full site plan, but there are one, two, three other suites to the bottom right side of this complex, and they abut what is the current loading dock, which you're about to, to dismantle to make that basket. No, but not on the, no, you're, you're neglecting to tell everybody that there's a parking lot up there too, though. So it's contiguous, I'm saying it's contiguous. We, we carved this out. We chose these suites on purpose so that they're all connected. So, so you could really probably take a, a, a pen and sever this entire, entire facility down the middle. So that's what we did. So. I see what your concern is, but to, to me, it's, it's not it's not really an issue. I wish I had a laser pointer to, to be precise. The, the bottom... Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It continues this way. There are yeah. three more suites. That yeah, the suites continue this way, sure. 
we're but, going to be we're not used by other entities, not it will be used by other other individuals, not the Board of Ed. Those other three suites could be used for light manufacturing or, or commercial purposes. As far as I know, they're, they're office. It's office. These are all offices here that are now empty and moment, uh, and a storage. Be, yeah, but well, based on the planning board's approval in True. December, they they could in the very near future be occupied by by business interests. They could be, and or they, they could be occupied the by the board of ed. They're going to do the loading dock that you're about about to dismantle. Plus, by taking out that that area that is the basketball court, I think that's from your drawing and the overall site plan, if that is the current loading dock or is actually part of the parking lot, the, the, the bottom the cell that's right beneath the basketball court, that's definitely part of the existing loading dock, but the upper part where the basketball court is joining, it's hard to discern here if that is part of the existing loading dock or a little bit of the, the parking lot. But, uh, I remember during Mr. Cosarelli's testimony in December of 2020, he uh, he spoke about how uh, I think it was you needed 40 40 parking spots and 50 were being provided. He, he did say that you, there was more parking being made available than this was required by current ordinances, but that was before this this plan was being considered. So I don't know if if now the parking situation. For this overall complex, may be somewhat compromised. It's something that no, we we have in a, we have in the agreement. We have certain parking spots that we can use on the other side for administrators or whatever we need, and then the visitors. Which other side are you referring to? The, the side we were talking about. Right, that's parking the spot. Parking lot. Yeah, that one side. Have, so that would be taking a slice out of it. That would be administration or whatnot. I don't really plan on using that though. Something that needs to that needs to be uh, uh, addressed and resolved. Right. Uh, now I, I know you wanted most of this. Commentary what's, what's, on, no, no, no. on this particular part well, of the Wait building. a second, what needs to be addressed and resolved? Well, the, the possible impact on the parking, I'm not quite sure that what you and I are saying about the, the uh, uh, effect that this project may have on the parking, situ the existing parking lot is... In the parking lot, you mean? The, the basket, I, I'm, what I'm saying is that, that that proposed basketball court might actually cut, take away a bit of the parking lot. No, the, the proposed basketball court is on existing, it's, it's raised, it's not in the parking lot. It's raised. It's, You're saying it's, that's, on, that's purely on the loading, the loading dock that's there? It, yes, it's, All right. it's, it's our, we, we now own, own, we now rent part of that loading dock, and that loading dock's gonna be outside court. All right, well, I'll take the word for it that that basketball court is on, on, on the loading dock. It's, it's on not, the loading It's not clear from the, the original site plan that Mr. Stern well, presented to the board. Well, that's the end of the, Mr. Sheldon, that's the end of the building, right. and that's the loading dock. All right, so that's, I'll, 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 I'll defer to your judgment and assume that that's all, that's all correct. Yeah, there's and nothing, just, to, just for the edification of all the parents in here, there's, there's nothing outside near trucks or any of that stuff. This is, this is raised, how, how high is it raised, you know? That's pretty on spot, though. It's high, this a little higher, maybe. All right, I know you wanted comments at this point, point confined just to the uh, highlighted area, just to this large space, but as, uh, uh, as one of the coaches uh, uh, said a few moments ago, uh, the overall size of the room is a concern even to uh, non-coaches like me. Uh, in order, just really basic elementary physics, if you, if you throw a ball just 100 feet, in order to achieve that distance, you know, just a normal lot, just basic elementary first semester physics, the ball has to go approximately 25 feet in the air in order to have a range of 100 feet. Nah. I'm more than happy to, to sit down with you and show you the That's physics. That's not happening. There, there, there's physics. no way that a professional athlete from shortstop to first base or, or, or even farther than that is throwing the ball 25 feet in the air. Wait, you just you throw, throw a basic lob in order to, for that ball to go 100 feet. I'm okay. not talking about basketball. Okay. Maybe from the pitcher, I'm just talking about two people playing catch. You throw, uh, throw a ball. In order for that ball to go 100 feet, the, the ball has to achieve a height of a ground level of about 25 feet. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, I would now argue that we're definitely having this facility so our kids know how to throw a little bit more streamlined. Well, that's, but, but, but you had, at one point last in January, when you were talking about other uses for this, you, you talked about having a softball league uh, use this facility, other groups use it. Yeah. But, it, it, from my research, when I looked online to, to get the overall building specs, the clear ceiling height in this complex is listed, and one site in particular that I use is LoopNet. They say that the, the clear ceiling height throughout this complex ranges from 14 to 16 feet. 
that's not very, very high. And as a result, you're going to be very thwarted in, uh, you know, in, in achieving anything significantly above ground level. You're talking about drone courses as well. You know, most drones want to fly 30, 40, 50 feet. But you've got a ceiling, apparently, that is no more than 16 feet. So you're going to be very limited, in my opinion. Okay. Mr. Coswell may have more specific information about the, the true ceiling height for what There's I just discerned from real estate. Those are the true ceiling heights, but again, I, I, think, I think the point you're missing is the fact that, you know, if I can get a drone raceway for our drones that's 15 feet or 13 feet, as opposed to the drone raceway I have right now, doesn't make any sense. You're, you're, you're trying to thwart a project based on ceiling height. You guys have been doing it for months now, which is fine. This, it's, if I could get 100 foot ceilings, it would be phenomenal. It was. This is not a place to do fly balls. It's not. It's a place to do pitching and batting and all those things in those cages. It's a place to do pickup drills. All those things that you can do with little kids. Alligator drills. Remember those when little? All those things you can do here in the winter. Fundamental skills. It's not a place to hit a fly ball. It's, it's not. And I, and I never said it was. But to talk about trajectories and all those other things, 15 feet's pretty good when we have nothing now. So right now our kids are home doing nothing. So, so this now gives us that competitive edge. Instead of all of our kids sitting around all winter, we could have been utilizing this, getting ready for the spring, fundamentals, all those other things. So, so I appreciate the comment, but, um, and, and nobody's disputing it's 15 feet. You just gotta take a tape measure and maybe 60, I don't know what it is. It doesn't matter, but, but I, I think, I don't know if it's purposefully or not, it might be. Don't lose the conceptual idea of what this can bring to the community, not the things that it can't do for the community. Because right now we're doing nothing for the community in the, in the winter. There's no, there's no facility. So, oh, well, the facility so again, we should be applauded for that. Well, not, not saying that saying that the ceiling is too high, uh, not high enough now. Well, the facility mm -hmm. may be perfectly fine for ground level activities. I just think you're going to run into some really serious problems okay. when when anything happens with with walls, for example. They're going they're they're going to be hitting the ceiling. You're not going to be able to correct, and they'll be hit in cages, and cages stop the balls from hitting the ceiling. That's what the, the cage goes on the top too. There are indoor facilities like this with probably smaller ceilings all over the place. So, um, and again, I, I think everybody here has probably been in one and understands the concept here. Um, doing soccer drills out here. I mean, okay, if somebody hits the ball 20 feet in the air, okay. Can we do volleyball? Probably not, unfortunately. Um, maybe middle school volleyball, we're talking about possibly starting up that program again. Maybe a middle school volleyball player can get in there. I, I don't know, right? There are, there are gonna be some limitations, but to get 90% of all of our activities in here, I think that's a, that's a home run, no pun intended, but I mean, so. I do have other, other general questions. Well, let me go through, go through some of the slides and say the general questions with you. Yes. But maybe this, actually one last question that might be related to this. In the schematic, what, the one thing I can't see from this position uh, is uh, the location of uh, things like bathrooms and changing rooms. Can yep. you just point those out? Where Everything's down in the bottom, in the bottom left-hand area uh, when you first come in. So, so again, that's, those are things that we still have to talk about. Lock, we have a small locker room there now. I really don't know how much we need there. We're gonna talk about some of those specs, but that's the first area as you're walking. That's gonna be the office area. Um, the check-in area, um, all those things you just talked about, bathrooms, etc. So the, the main entrance is going to be bottom left on, on Cortland on the bottom left corner. Yes, right by the DPW yard. Right. So that's that's how I could best explain. It. And I assume there'll be emergency exits elsewhere. Just all so egress, yeah. all egress, all throughout. Okay, all right, all right. That's it for the moment. Hold on one second. Get back to where we were. All right, so jogging track area, all those other things. Let me go to the next one if anybody, you could do whatever you want. I'm just trying to make it a little more specific for us. The basketball court, outside training area. Um, I mean, you know, we, we still have to spec out the actual, if we get a full court there or whatnot, but, you know, we were talking. It's just the key. It's just the key, basically. It's not, it's not a three-point area. Again, it's for drills. It's for a little pickup game here and there. It's for a little recreation. It's not, you know, three-point area, uh, you know. Probably, probably not a scoreboard or anything like that. Maybe some intramurals out here, who knows. Okay, the workout room or the cardio room that's in the front when you first walk in, um, those are some things that we're looking for some um, you know, ideas on. Jeff and I met with a vendor, was that last week? Last week, and we said to the vendor, big technology vendor, we said, we want you to put the top technology in here. 
cardio stuff, all that stuff, whatever you have, big screens, everything, Peloton stuff. So we're working on some of that. Um, I don't know, any other ideas that you may have? Caleb, do you have an idea? I, saw, I thought you had a you look at Peloton. I think you're very excited. very excited about the Peloton. So again, if tonight doesn't spark your interest, you can email us uh, with any idea, if you, or, or I'm going to say after you come up and give me the ideas if you don't want to say it out loud, it's fine. But again, this will be a small workout area, more cardio-based, more specific to what our trainers need maybe. They want to work with a particular student on rehabilitation or, or something like that. So, so we're going to really kind of zone in on that stuff um, and take it from there. Aerobics, dance, Tai Chi, cheer, all that stuff. Anything else you guys could think of in there? Yes, ma'am. So, um, I've heard that the ceiling. Yes. Yes. Um, so, I just wanted to mention that when it comes to cheer, yes. obviously we've been moving forward. Um, yes. And we've been doing very well with the program. Yes. But one of the things that is required for cheerleading, especially competitive cheerleading, is like a minimum of 20 foot ceilings because now yep. you're talking basket tosses and things like that. Yes. So that, I don't know if that's something that could be adjusted or can something be done for that? Or well, do, no, they, so do they, they yeah. just, you know, can so we, continue we, practicing yes. in other places? So we, talk, we talked about that um, because although it is 20 feet, that's for different competitive levels. So we know different levels of cheerleaders in here. So we didn't want to you know, offset that. So obviously when we're practicing basket catches, tosses, and all that other stuff, we would probably have to go to a different venue. Um, we also talked about down at the Heck building, the, the new preschool, we're building a gym there as well. So that's going to be, that was originally going to be scoped out for wrestling, but now we're going to also add a chilling component. So your teams might be there, we're not sure. So we wanted to incorporate that here. We knew that the varsity would have a hard time, you know, uh, on some sure, occasions. Sure. You know, and do you know the measurements of that space? Do you have those numbers? Um, I just know it's large. I don't know the exact measurement. Only because, so I know that the high school's been, for the most part, limited on their space and they practice on five panels, but competitive is nine. Right. So they kind of fall behind because they're not able to add that into their score sheets because they're not using full nine. Oh, really? So, yeah, that's a big deal. <laughs> Very big deal. Oh, I, I didn't even know that. The, I actually used to be a I'm pretty sure. I want to say that the exact board. measurements, like, yeah, if you can send those to me, then we'll, yeah. we'll because again, this isn't spec'd out. Yeah. yeah. So again, these, again, these are the concepts. We can make the rooms bigger and smaller. So if you can send me those dimensions, I'll talk to Mr. Mara. I, I didn't know there were actual nine panels. Oh yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. But yeah. it looks fantastic. I'm yeah. No. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else you think in that area? Yes, ma'am. Or is there an area being designated for gymnastics? Because uh, there's a, quite a range of di gymnastics where you don't necessarily need certain height. Uh, but and uh, for instance, rhythmic gymnastics, which doesn't really require any significant height at all. And I was wondering whether the potential is there any place, even from the exterior, for a uh, handball court. Oh, handball, that's great. We can put that down a good look. I, I would love to put handball in there, that'd be great. Um, well, thank you for the handball comment. So the first thing with gymnastics, we definitely, we definitely talk about gymnastics in this space, but also in those running lanes for um, horse vault, is that horse vault? Whatever, it's, I'm sorry, whatever it's called. Um, you know, closing down some of that so you can do a, a vault off there. And that's really where we're at right now. Um, we probably should talk to some um, area gymnasts or um, we don't have that here as a sport, but you know what I mean? So we really don't have that, but, uh, but it's something that we can definitely look into. So put that down for me, Jeff. Jeff's like everything to me today. The gym, gym, gymnastics is a high school sport. Yeah, it is, but you, uh, in order to have a team, it's usually you have individuals. So some places have like a mom as the coach and her daughter or son compete, but the NGSA has gymnastics, yeah. Absolutely. There are some schools that have
So, I mean, I know a lot of the coaches like to turn that up a little bit during wrestling season, so. Um, uh, and I imagine uh, the walls are going to be padded, like the cafeteria. Yeah, we talked all about that, the padding. Uh, we, we even talked about a spotlight, you know, because even though, even though we're, we're, I'm sure that the tournaments will be in the gym, because as you all probably know, the gym's being redone too because it was flooded out. So the tournaments will be in the gym. We're going to have a spotlight in there. We're going to have all the, all the great stuff for the rec and high school programs. I, I could see us running novice tournaments in, in here, you know, setting some chairs up or a small bleacher yeah. for, the, for some of the novice tournaments. Why, you know, we, so so we're, we're, all those things are, are, uh, are going to be there. So it's like a, rest, like, a, like a wrestling room. Absolutely. And so, it seems yeah. like the other rooms could actually fit mats. So you could have probably even host a part of it. You could. The only, the only issue I had with running the tournament right now, I mean, listen, if, if it's possible, it's possible. It would, it would just be the, you know, I, I know it, like, especially recreation tournaments, is like a thousand parents, right? So you got to be careful. So where would they sit? You know, just, and then you get everybody on the mat. You know how that goes. So sure. we've all been to one of those, right? So, but, but again, listen, if it can happen, it can happen. And we're not doubting anything. It's just, we talked about putting some stands in there, but I, I just think it would take away right now from the whole experience. But if we put some portable stands in there, if we, if we have to, we can do that. It's not an issue. But, but definitely mats on the outside, closed space, the HVAC's new. The, the space, believe it or not, the architecture of that space is, is tremendous too, if you're into architecture and into the, the way the, the, uh, the trusses are and everything. So, so um, one of the deals that we made was that we wanted Bobby and the, and the, and the owner to keep that look you know, that, that old Belleville tradition um, and make it part of ours now. So, so that's going to be fun, I guess. The ceiling is some old wood trusses. And to, you, you, someone mentioned hanging some ropes from there and being able to pull yourself up and, you know, work, do workouts in that manner. It's very easy to achieve that there. It's exciting space. It's kind of like, first walked in, I said, this is kind of like a rocky space, you know, like, <laughs> I want to work out. The kids are going to be excited. And, and um, I'll tell you how far-reaching this has gone already. I've gotten calls, you know, from other uh, municipalities, towns, to ask me if I was working on this. I said, yeah. <laughs> you know? So it is exciting that, you know, the word is out there. For architects, this is an exciting type of project, an adaptive reuse, you know, from a space that was originally intended for one use. You know, we're going to take it and make it into something else. And we did something on the, on the other end of Cortland. It was a, an old factory, about 20,000 square feet, 10,000 square feet per floor. It's Empire Medical now. So anything can be achieved within a building. And as I said before, it's health, safety, and welfare. It's the bottom line in all the construction laws and, and standards that we live by. We would never put anyone into a situation where they're not going to be protected properly by the building and the facility. That's what we're licensed to do. So, you know, I, I, can, I can tell you that we are very, you know, very much aware of. You know. Yep. All right. Thank you. All right, again, any other questions or comments? This is a space that I'm very excited about, too. This, it's, it's really long. It's really uh, open uh, for interpretation. But yes, sir? Oh. Yeah. So we're kind of, it's kind of connected. It's, if you go, well, it's on the lower left. It's really on the lower left, so it's, it is pretty close. That's, that's the whole reason why we, not that we want a locker room for everything in there, but it was really mostly for the rest of the piece. Thanks, Mike. So yeah, so so here we definitely want to incorporate everything we could, right? Um, your the rowing machines are important. We actually even talked about maybe putting a tank in there at some point. Me, me and I were talking about a, a row tank, but um, that was that just didn't work out. But uh, the rowing machines, the cardio, the free weights, uh, all those things. Um, I don't know if we're missing anything. If you have any ideas, something that we're missing, something that you've seen in your gym, something that's new. Uh, again, let me know. Yes, Mr. Sean. No, the, the, the warehouse, the other warehouse is there.
is a community pool. Right. Uh, if Mr. Stern has all this uh, other available space, as I said earlier, you're only using 25,000 square feet of uh, roughly 80,000. There's, if he's willing to make more deals uh, with us, and I want to point out here, uh, you may not be aware of this, very few are probably, the uh, warehouse that's currently going <coughs> construction on the case, the former Katy site, yep. that's a 300,000 square foot warehouse. Rumors are that Amazon may be used, but I'm getting off topic. Mm -hmm. uh, part of that agreement with that developer right. was he was he was committed to building a recreational space for the township. Correct. Now, I don't remember the details. I don't know how much money he was willing to uh, uh, front for some recreational space, and there was some discussion about the reservoir property on Jerolamon being repurposed. He might be doing something that here, but it seems to me that, you know, I, the timing now, it, it couldn't be any better. If this other space is available, granted, you know, putting in an Olympic-sized pool in this complex is not going to be a simple undertaking. You're talking right. about major, <laughs> possibly taking down some of the, the building in order to excavate or right. to try to excavate with the walls in place is going to obviously be a much more expensive proposition. But, you know, since you're in the midst of this, why not make a few more phone calls? The, the, I think it's bridge development, the people who are responsible for the warehouse and the Kinney site, and see what they're maybe willing to do to fulfill their obligation to build recreational space for the township. You well, have, I'm not feeling that that's... Corp, you have all these big end corporates lined up. Here's, here's a, 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 you want the community to use this facility. This is maybe a once in a lifetime opportunity to finally get a community swimming pool in place and, and, a, and a swimming program in place for the high school. So, you know, right. I, 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 just, I, I'm glad we're taping this. So when I bring to this community a pool down there, I want to make sure that everybody, I'm, I want, you, I want your support up here. Okay. Right here, your support. I'm one happy to sign wherever I can. You don't have to sign, it's remember, coming, don't worry. <laughs> as you will remember, in the summer of 2019, when the Claremont Field Project was just- You were 100% behind it. You and I were on the field. I know. Not only was I behind it, but you talked about the lights. Who was right? You Since credited school. me with you know with moving forward with the lighting right, project. Listen, I, I've always said that, I, and, and now the pool. This is this well. Is, as I, you know, I we are said, one step ahead of each as, other. As I said to you, when you're going to do a major project like this, whether it's Claremont Field or this, mm -hmm. don't do it half arse. You want you you're going to make the commitment. Do it the right way. And if there is totally other crazy. space available in this facility, and if you can get others to pay pay for the pool. Go for it. So I I, I don't Sounds know. We've already tossed around the idea with Mr. Coswell and others about having having a, an Olympic-sized swimming pool in this facility. But yes, if, if there's no harm in, in inquiring and seeing. I it, totally agree with you. And you might be able to get it paid for through the the bridge group, the people that are putting up that big warehouse, right. and any of your sponsors. So yes, I, I thank just you. Want to throw out that idea. No, I appreciate that. So yeah. everybody, stay tuned. Thank you. Though. All right, please look into it. Oh, absolutely. So in this spot, we have um, you know soccer, baseball training, uh, some stuff you can do with cheer, football. Uh, and again, that opens up to the entire lot. So that's just kind of open space. We're looking at putting turf down there, obviously. It just makes more sense. Um, the, the running track is going to be a running track um, type of material. Anything else about the materials? All right, normal stuff. Rubber, rubberized material. So turf in here. Uh, we don't know if we're going to stripe it or how we're going to stripe it. Uh, I think that's the, that's the least of our issues right now, uh, just getting it down. The whole idea is that after we worked out some, some of the things with, um, you know, the lawyers, after the lawyers argued a little bit, we're ready to move forward. We're, we're ready to kind of put this together. And hopefully our opening date is July um, of this year so we can use it in the summer and then right into the, into the winter. So, so again, stay tuned for that. Um, and this will just be an open space. Uh, again, this may be um, one of the one of the, the big um, um, facilities that I've researched when we were doing all this. One of the like, ten or twelve that I was at um, has this where there are drop down nets to, to so if you take the retractable nets up, then you can kind of um, cordon off two or three smaller areas to rent out. So I think you've all probably seen that. I don't know if we're going to do that at first. I mean, again, we, I really just want to get it operational right now and get in there. 
You know, I don't, don't want to overthink it too much. We could always add stuff, but that's why this meeting is important. Some of the important stuff in it, like the ropes and other things that I don't even think of. <clears throat> uh, again, this, these are the cages. Uh, Coach talked about the size of the netting, 60 feet, obviously. Those are things that we heard. Uh, we'll come back to you all with the specs before we get all that stuff, the retractable netting and stuff like that. Right now, there's only four cages. We talked about some other ideas that we have to get more cages. But right now, I think this is good. That might be a, a phase two kind of idea. <clears throat> these are the uh, these are the running lanes um, for sprinting and stuff uh, on the outside, and there's like an agility area on the inside there uh, that we really didn't talk about. We just put Bobby just put that in there, you know, little you know ropes course and stuff like that. Um, but on the outside, there's there's plenty of uh, room there for these lanes, um, nice and long. Again, going to be rubberized. Um, probably stripe, not the stripe on that. That's a, that's our, yeah, that's our deal. But um, but again, great for sprinting, great for getting ready for for a sport coming up, um, or just walking around the outside of the track. All right, any ideas on rock walls or things that you've seen? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. When was it finalized? When did we start it? Um, we started it five months ago, maybe four or five months. Back and forth negotiations. And how long will this take to complete? A few months, two or three months, maybe. So we started paying rent already. We didn't start. We start paying rent. I think yesterday, March fifteenth. So as a month, we'll pay rent, and then a couple months from now, then we'll be able to use the building. Yeah, that's how. Because you have to, you have to acquire it before you can do all yeah, the work. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah, no, okay. So it actually worked out that we had a, we waited a little longer than we approved it. We approved, it, I think, in Jan January. I think maybe January was approved, but we haven't we hadn't finalized the lease agreement per se yet. We had some issues um, with it, and we just finalized it not too long ago. And I think March fifteenth. I think today is the day that we, we get the keys. Actually, I, got, I get the keys tomorrow, so. And, and the beginning, I missed it. Did you say that the board was not involved in, the, in this project, or the town was not involved in, in funding the project? The, um, I don't know if I said either of those, but the board is funding the project. Okay, yeah. okay. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Dr. Tom. Hi. Hi. I have a question. Um, I know in some areas you mentioned how it would be open space. Um, like for example, football. Uh, with the, I guess, the things that are used for, tra for to train football, is there an area where that's going to be kept? Is that like a closet area, or is that going to be facilitated to the, you know, whoever goes in to train for football, or do they have to bring their own? For equipment, in yeah, equipment, yes. Yeah. So, so I don't, I don't foresee this, this, this facility as a place to wear your pads, per se, your own pads. Okay. But if you were, you'd have to bring them and, and store them. We, we wouldn't have any storage for that. But other equipment, like, like holding pads or yeah. balls and all that stuff, there, there are utility closets that we're going to pull all that stuff in. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if it's raining really bad and, and whatnot, we have other indoor areas. Mm -hmm. um, but for this, I, I wouldn't see this as a place where you have full equipment. It would be more like you know, maybe passing drills, some lineman skill drills, but nothing, uh, nothing with equipment. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. If the coach wanted to do that, we obviously wouldn't stop it. But there would be no place to store your pads. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, pretty much going off the of football. So would you have to like the recreation teams? Would they have to like designate times or like with the rental program that you guys have? Or is that something that's involved within the board and right. the town? So, so how we have it planned right now is that obviously the the high school uh, and middle school programs precedent, and then the rec program is right underneath that. So, as we do now with all the fields, so so our schools use almost ninety something percent of all the fields, and the rec. I, I consider the rec part of the schools, right? It's the same kids, etc. Right? So. The whole idea is to get everybody in here to use it. Um, everyone who's, you know, helping to fund it, your tax money, all that stuff, right? So, so the whole idea is the rec program has to get in here too. So we already talked about, let's say it's uh, 
I don't know, a Saturday, right? Maybe rec gets it from 8 o'clock in the morning to 1 o'clock, and you all divvy that up how you want to. You know, everybody gets an hour, everybody gets an hour and a half, the older kids get two hours. I don't know how, how that schedule would be. And then the high school gets it the rest of the day, and then at night, 8 o'clock at night, we can open it up for, you know, pay facility, something like that. So, I mean, if you really think about it, obviously during the school day, all of our kids will be in school, right? So that's when I would try to open up the rentals to, you know, yoga. You know, so if you're a yoga instructor, let's say, and you don't have a place to go, this could be your studio during the day. Why not, right? So you, you, you partner with us, you pay a rent every day, and, and that's, how it, it, that's how it's going to work out. Because during the day, it's going to lay dormant. There are some days where we'll have school nine students go over there. Um, we may bust some other students in to use the rock walls or, or whatever it is. We're not sure yet. We're hoping to do some of that. Um, but on the weekends and at night, it, this place is going to be open, I think, every day, um, utilized. So, so we're, there's definitely going to, be, going to be slots. We just have to, that's what we're working on now. We, we just acquired, or we're going to, the board hopefully is going to accept my recommendation and acquire this scheduling system um, that we're, we're looking to purchase. It's a software system. It's all online. It's all cloud-based. So you can, it actually will have every area in the district. So even like if you wanted to utilize School 9's gym or something like that, it'll have it on there, you can go on there, you click on it, you put your group in there. And what, we'll, what we would do is we would talk to the rec department and we'd say, you know, you have it for this time, so that would be grayed out, right? So you couldn't, you couldn't schedule it. So it's all gonna be automated, so. All right. Again, any ideas, give me a, any rock balls or, and then what are we missing? Is there something that we didn't talk about that should be in here that you can remember? Yes, sir. Uh, I came a little late, so you might have already discussed it. In regards to like, you know, the rentals, like you know, elementary school dismisses at 3.15, teachers can leave at 3.20. Can I like shoot down there at like 3.45 and have access to it? So as like, so the teacher out, in history? Right? Yeah, I mean like, you know, you show the rock climbing wall, the weight room, yep. the joke about the Pelotons and stuff. Yeah, like, sure. Can there be access for faculty and staff? And yeah, so, so we haven't talked about that with the board, but I don't know if the liability is there with that. So we, and I don't want to, again, I said we don't want to take away from any private um, facilities, but for employees here, I'm sure there'll be something Will be able to work out. I don't know if that would be before school or after. Before school would be rough because if you don't live around here, how are you going to shower, right? So, so yeah, but it's definitely something. We're going to open up as much as we can. I, I don't, I don't want this to be closed. Well, obviously overnight, or but I don't want it to be closed when somebody can be using it. Now, that's not what this is about. This is about getting people in there. It's about wellness. It's about you know fitting a need for all of us, right? Um, especially, I hate I. I Anyone who's talked to me for more than five minutes now knows that I don't like using the word COVID or any of that, but we are starting to see a lot of those effects post-COVID. Um, you know, just just kids trying to acclimate with their friends again. There's a lot more arguing going on, right? There's a lot of that. If you don't believe that, then you, you have to open your eyes a little bit more because it's definitely happening. So any way we can acclimate them more together and, and get them back to some of those social, social skills or those social awareness that they need, is what we're going to do. So, yeah, Joe, that's definitely, if I could open up to you guys, I definitely will. $100 a day. So. What's the uh, anticipated time uh, that the uh, facility is going to be open? And it's going to have security, like cameras and stuff like that. So, yeah, we've already talked about, I think, Jeff, how many cameras are you there, you know? Like 25 cameras, um, security guard stationed there, when, when you know, again, uh, possibly an administrative assistant. Um, we were talking about um, someone to oversee it. Like we have um, in Clearman Field. People don't realize this maybe, but you know, Clearman Field, we put this together, we opened it up. The board wanted to open it up like all of you were hoping to do like an open space thing. And now we had some vandals in there. We had kids that were unsupervised. So now we have a guard there. Um, that's offset by the rental fees on the weekends that maybe you all don't know about. But um, So again, we're, we're trying to sustain all that. But I want to open it all day if I can, all night. Seven days a week, 365 days a year, if I can. I don't know if that's going to happen, um, but no, no, it won't be. I mean, it, it's not going to be midnight, um, but it, I, I mean, most of these facilities. I mean, I know I have four kids. I mean, sometimes I'm in, you know, a bubble or whatever, nine, eight, nine o'clock at night. You know, so again, we have to see what the need is. There is absolutely nothing around here. I don't know if you're all familiar with that. You have to go to Fairfield. Um, you know. 
some, you know, Lindhurst has an indoor batting cage. It's like, you know, half the size of the hallway. Um, so this is, should be rocking pretty, pretty, you know, just for our people. I mean, our, our, our town comes first. Um, but if no one wants to use it, then it's open. I'll definitely rent it out. So that's the idea. Yes, sir. Uh, is there a question about uh, like audio system or speaker system? I don't know if there's going to be like one per room. Yeah, that's a great question. For the whole facility. Yeah, we talked about that. Like yeah. Aging system. If they're looking for a specific yeah. kit. So, so because it'll, it's because it'll be designated a school, it's going to have our you know, lockdown systems, all the things that we need in there. Um, where we were just talking today, we're going to do facial recognition. We're not sure some of the some of the buildings are, are having that or put, established already, uh, and those are some things that you don't know about as parents, you know. It's, so, but we'll have that in there. Um, we were talking about every room having its own specified sound system, which makes sense, right? If you're working out and if you're in a wrestling room, you got to put the wrestling song on, right? So, um, so we're, we're that's Jeff's department. So if it, if it goes bad, blame Jeff right here. But. Uh, yeah, all that stuff. Lighting, um, you know, again, some of the partner vendors that we've had, you know, all these vendors that have been selling us textbooks and technology, I'm, I'm now saying to them, put your money where your mouth is, you know, kind of give back to a facility like this, and let's put up some big panel screen, t uh, big screen TVs, and, you know, all these different things. So it's, it's really going to be state-of-the-art, um, newest stuff that we can find. That's why we need your help too. If you, if you find a, an article or something, just email it my way. Um, if we can get it, you know, we're going to get it for our kids. But yeah, but every room's going to have a different theme, I guess. So according to the coach, I guess that's, that's in there at the time. So. Yes, Ms. Short. So we have, in that one area there, we talked about a, a possibly making a little training area, like for a trainer. Um, some of those training rooms, no offense, Jeff, some of those training rooms become expensive, but I think just to give a trainer an area, uh, we have to talk about that too. And again, if it's open to the public, um, if it's open to other groups, we wouldn't have a trainer there for them, obviously, but for our own students we would, or at least a space for a trainer, so again, yeah, something we, we were talking about. Um, and also a parent area, we were talking about that. That might be a little bit more down the road if you have an idea, but just not um, at this time, but an area where if your kids are working out, instead of waiting in the car, we're have a little waiting room area where there's like a little snack bar kind of thing. That's that's kind of in the works, uh, but we really want to see. I really want to see what you all said today. See some of the feedback from the live stream, and then we can move some of the things around. But we think that's important too to have the parents come in and be able to, you know, especially for the recreation. You know, when we're here and there's like recreation wrestling, you know, they're in the hallway and stuff like that. We, we want to make that that. Um, Stakeholder group feel comfortable too. You don't have to hang out in the hallway. We want you sitting in your car, you know. So we can put a couple of TVs up or, or whatever it is. Um, so those are some of the things that we are we are thinking about. So. Yes, doctor. Just to address a, an elephant that might be in the room, at least for some of the coaches, when we're talking about the rentals. What if our competition wants to rent from us? Great question. Uh, if we charge them double, that's what we're doing. Triple. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, yeah. uh, Belleville, my, from my athletic director days, has been a coaching grounds for a lot of the private schools. Sure. Uh, especially when we come to uh, the athletics. And Agreed. I, I would. Yep. Uh, I mean, I, I <laughs> not worry about that yeah, no, since there are no facilities in yeah. this area. I would think that we would stay away from other schools and our conferences and, and whatnot, you know, the, the private schools, Primus Catholic and whatnot. Um, I. So I was guilty of this my first five years uh, as an administrator, poaching kids from places like Belleville, so I apologize now. That was a long time ago, but um, I think one of, the, one of the ways around that, well, one of the things I do like is that as coaches come here, it shows the prowess that we have here, how we're growing these programs. Like, you know, like back in the day, nobody, not back in the day, but you know, maybe recently, nobody wanted to come here for kids. Now they're, they're actively looking at a lot of our kids, so that's, that's, a, that's a good sign, but at the same time, you don't want to lose those kids either. This will definitely keep those kids, but you, but you have a good point. We can't now, I don't want to take money from our opponents to make them better either, because, and, and especially the private schools that are going to be looking at our kids, right, and then, and then the gate next, the cage next to them say, hey, come over here, sir. That's something we can do. And that's in the, in the policy, we have to be careful who we run to, but I mean, there's a way we can work. Uh, at the same time, uh, that is a Primus Catholic student that lives in Bell, does he have access to that place? They can use it as if it's like an open, yeah. They would have access to that. If it's open. If it's like an open thing. So 
So if you have, let's say you have a, let's say you have a, um, uh, I don't even know if there's any grammar schools anymore, but let's say a grammar school elementary student that's on the rec wrestling team, obviously they can, you know, wrestle here with us. We have that now, I think. There's a, there's a few students that are outside of uh, the districts, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's not an issue. Your taxpayer gets fine. But again, an open gym night, whatever. We're talking about the actual team coming down with the coach and renting out the space and then turning and saying, hey, come on over here, that kind of thing. If you want to send your child to Prowse Catholic, that's totally your call. I mean, but again, we don't want to open up the grounds to have our kids poached from there. So. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm very glad that you guys are talking about the security and everything, especially for the kids. Now, this is, will be open for the entire, you know, to the public space. It was only for Belleville residents. Um, how we are going to go entries? We are going to show like a membership or something, a car or something, or we have to pay a fee for the year right. for the kids or something like that, or not? So, okay, so the idea now is to run it exactly how we run our other sites. So we have other, we have other sites that we rent out, it's through a, um, it's through a um, use of facility form, and there's a fee. Um, now since we're growing, we're going to have it automated. So you would ask for a space at a certain time, and you would either get it or be rejected from it. So that's like an outside group. For our students, the coaches, the athletic director, the rec director, um, the dance instructor, we'll have all those scheduled first. It's only the slots that we aren't going to use that we would be renting out to other individuals. For people in the town, we would probably open up, um, and again, I'm just talking out loud now, but um, like an open gym type thing. So we might say from Saturday from nine to 12, no teams are going in, uh, but if you want to come and work out, you have to show your Belleville driver's license, or whatever it is, sign a waiver, and you can work out. I don't know, I'm just making that up right now, but that's, that's how I see it. Um, I have to see the legality around that and the insurability of that, but um, but I think the main thing right now is to try to get people in there and utilize like the lock walls and stuff like that, or some of the machines. Uh, but definitely our our, pro our kids and our sports programs and, and our coaches that deserve it too. You have volunteer coaches that put all this time in and you know and they're and they're you know they're working outside in the cold and maybe they have like you know it's dark right and you got headlights on right. We've all done that right. You're playing with that. You know, coming to a facility like this, you know, it's, and, and all it does is it, it, it allows you to instruct your kids more. There's more self-discipline involved. Uh, there's other things. There's so many. There's so many attributes to a, a facility like this. Yes, sir. Leading off that, um, as a red coach, say you know I don't have a designated time with my team, but say I, like I have a couple players that I, you know I want to work with. You know, mm -hmm. would I be able to you know through the I guess through the right program, yep. if I was to work, you know, with the director, say, hey, look, you know, I got like five kids I want to work with on um, Tuesday nights and Thursday nights. Yep, that's it. Would that be possible? That's how it works. Awesome. Yep, that's it. That's right. Uh, with my current nice. What are polo? What are polo? Yeah. Nice. That's great. <laughs> uh, are there any requirements that force? that would force a shower facility to be um, created here. Charlie had mentioned a few moments ago about the teachers using it, and you said how difficult that would be if they were in and yeah. they couldn't shower. But are there any state requirements that require so, some it, shower So that was one of the things that, we, that we've been kind of back and forth. That's why it's taking a little bit longer, because we're, we're trying to see some of the, the code issues with regard to schools and stuff like that. Um, I, I'm not aware of any requirement for that right now, but again, the, the DOE is still behind because of COVID, so I'm sure we'll get through that. And if we did, I mean, I don't think it's an issue to add one shower uh, if you really had to. Um, but again, most of these facilities that I've been at that schools are using, since it is a lease, it's not really um, probably mandated because we do have it at the schools. There are showers at the schools, even though they're not used. So we could always say that our students can, can utilize the showers at the schools. So, but it is something we're going to do. You can have some general, final general questions. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so we have general questions. And, and if you are all going to sneak out, I really just want to say I appreciate all of you and all of you, uh, all your support for all these projects. Um, oh, you know, uh, did I put concerns? What happened? My last slide's on there. Um, but, but, uh, but thank you very much if you're going to leave. But I'll take any questions now because then we have some probably good ones coming. So, so Frank, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, 
the last slide you had up there, what are we missing? Right. What I think we're missing is, is the primary objective or our education system and what you are primarily obligated to do in your job is to educate our children. Now, you don't, you don't think extracurricular has a curricular right? it's a major part of it. One of the only requirements for graduation is gym and physical fitness. It's the only, that in English. I mean, those are two things you have to take. If you go to school for six years, you have to take gym for six years. Did you know that? So, so, so again, you, you always come up here and you want to dialogue. So we can dialogue. This is good. For you to say something like that shows me that you totally missed the mark on what a position like mine does. It's not just worrying about the grades and whatnot. It's a whole bunch of things, including social emotional learning of students right now, post COVID. You have no awareness of that, sir. You don't, unfortunately. You don't know what's happening in the buildings. And I'm glad we don't because these are private matters. But the money we're spending on social emotional programs, things of this this nature, um, indoor facilities, it's all part of extracurricular. The word curricular is in there, so when is it's a my, big proponent. When is my time to speak? Oh, go ahead. I, I answered your question. Okay. It was a question. Well, it's not a board meeting, so. It was so you a ask statement. questions at board meetings and then Did comment here. So okay. you, you never let me, even at your meeting. Go ahead. You never let me finish. I think you're scared of what I'm going to say. Now, in January, you made a presentation about the state of our education system and all that. Okay. I don't have that agenda with me, but I was putting notes down. Uh, our math scores, our English scores, are, it's sad. It's, it's a polite word to say. And on quite a few, over a dozen occasions, says, we've got to do better than there. We need improvement there. We're working on that in there. Yes. That's the primary mission of education. Now, we're not educating our kids, but here are we going there. You, you, first of all, you become, instead of superintendent, you become a real estate entrepreneur. You're bailing out all these landlords all over town. They're getting rich. This project alone, just the rent in five years, is $2.2 million. And all these rents, and then what happens at the end of these five years? We're at the mercy of these landlords. If we want to continue, who knows what they don't want to go and get. <laughs> Today's paper, there's a big article in today's paper about the, a report on the high taxes and the cost per taxpayers. And unfortunately, in this report, Belleville was way up on top of the list. 565 municipalities, Belleville was number 15. Not to be proud of, the highest tax rate uh, in the state, number 15, the lowest family income, only $85,000. So that's what we need to do now. We can't go to all this rentals, but the average public, when I talk to people one-on-one -on -one and I explain and show them the facts of what you've done, they go through the wall. This is unbelievable what we're doing to our school system. And the last couple of years, we've got tons of state aid because We've had tons of money coming to the state through this COVID money, and then our great governor borrowed nine billion dollars, authorized, he borrowed five billion. When all this thing comes about in another year or two, you're gonna have the next governor wondering where the hell the money's gonna come from. And it's been done before, state aid to schools has been cut before because of state. We are not a highest tax state. Let's pay attention to educating our system. Teach them how to write. Teach them how to read. Your own admission in January left a lot to be desired. So this thing here, you have no idea what you're doing. The only thing you know for rent, every question that people ask, oh, we're going to look into that. Oh, we don't know what that's going to cost. Oh, we're revising that. Oh, this is just new. You are killing us, sir. And we used to have a, a law Superintendents had to move in Belleville. When they were hired, they had six months to move here. You don't want to live in our lovely town. You moved up to Sparta, you know, away from the Belleville that you're supposed to be working for. So let's get on straight. Unless you could come, and, and I can't believe, here you're holding a, a stakeholders meeting. You don't know, you and the architect can't answer all the questions, yet we're already paying rent. You don't know what we're going to do here. And you're paying rent. The least start. The question are you talking about? And the other thing about basketball. At the shower? When you're going down that area. What do you, what do you mean? On the way down the street, 
Cortland Street? Yeah, numerous. Okay. Times, yeah. Did you notice we had basketball courts right across the street and school line playground? I know we do, yeah. All right, so now we're you know, you keep telling we don't have any of these. I didn't, I didn't say, I said we don't have them. Well, I'm talking about the school, you're in the school district meetings, sir. We don't, the talking community the needs it. Your thing is educating, I know stop that. all this stuff. I, I used that. to be the recreation director, we had all kinds of I know, I know, I, I am very I used to do basketball courts up at the red house. All right, I'm, and then what happened? Very familiar with the what you did in this town. Go, somebody took it down because they're yeah. worried about the how many times from North Company. Do you remember when you were on the council, whatever they call it, time? How many times did you guys not support the budget when it was struck down? Do you remember the, the what? When the no. budget was struck down by the people, how many times did you cut it? Do you remember? Because that's why we're nine million dollars underfunded still. So, no, so again, no. listen. I Listen, have an answer for that. Talk. What I don't have an answer for that. The you vote, think you do? No, I do. I have, have a legal proof in the answer. Cut the, budget. the voters voted the budget down. In 1988, all right? Right. We, the commission, the former government, cut the budget by half a million dollars. No. Guess what? The board of Ed sued us. We went to court. Judge Young, the administrator of the law judge, ruled 16 cuts we made, 15 were upheld. Yep. One of them, with the fuel oil account, the administrator, the superintendent admitted he hid administrative salary in the fuel oil account. Right. So don't tell me about it. The reason the budget was cut because there was fraudulent uh, items put in there. No, and we I, proved it in court, Dr. Tomko, not how many, how, many, how, many, how many times was the, this township support a school budget here that didn't go to you as a, as a were you a committeeman at the time, whatever it was called? A was chair, chair, chair for former government. How many times did it go to your desk, and how many times did you guys cut it? Do you remember when you were here? Oh, Almost it was, every time. It was only two years. Yeah, so, but every time, you during that time, when no. you were those councils. You're so, wrong. So if you, you talk to Sheldon about compounded issues. You are wrong. Tell me. Don't try to put words in my I'm mouth because the fact will be lied. I'm asking you to, to one, answer it. When the voters voted the budget, not, not when I was in office, because we did it the right way. Did you vote it down twice though? When it was voted, the two times you're saying you were in there, when it was voted down, did you support the board and put the money back in or no? Did you cut it? We cut it and were upheld in court because it was fraudulent entries. Right. But are you listening help. or you don't want to hear? That did help to support Why the did it superintendent admit in a memo that he hid administrative salaries in the fuel oil account? I don't know who that was. All I know is that when is I that, I, it was Mr. Mariello, God rest his soul. Is that legal? We were 19. Is that legal? To hide money? No, of course not. Okay, well, that's why it was, was cut. Was he arrested? Was but he arrested? Every other time. No, he was chastised by the Was he time. arrested, though? You guys filed complaints against everybody else. Was he arrested? No, so I don't even know if that happened. But when I first got here, we were $19 million in under adequacy. Even with the aid we just got, the $8.5 million, I guarantee we're still $8 million under adequacy. And I know we could argue about that. But that doesn't happen overnight. That's years well, and years half and years year budget and years of the, of the budget being cut by council members. Now, I'm not saying that you were all of those years, but you were definitely part of that, which is fine. But that's, sir, that's how it goes. Sir, in all due respect, yes, the voters voted the budget down. Correct. But in every case, in every single case, prior commissioners and councilmen actors, right. all the money was restored. All money restored. The only time it wasn't when we actually went to court and proved the fraud that was in the budget. Now, you know, I don't know, that, I don't know how that happened. They restored the money after the budget went down. Well, I have the court case if you'd like to read it one of these days. I don't, I don't know how that happened. I, mean, I don't really don't know how well, you're I mean, I don't know What happened? <laughs> so. Council people would get together with the board of bed and they'd have coffee and then they'd come out and tell the public, oh, we, we made a deal. We right. cut fifty thousand dollars, which was peanuts, right. and the people thought they were satisfied, right? No, but I when we actually did the right way and demand all the records that the law says has to be provided to the government body, then we were able to prove it, sir. No, I listen. Right, and, and as Mr. Chairman always says, as, when he's always up here, as things compound, right, interest, and all those stuff. Look at the gas prices now. What, what I was planning on for this budget is not even close to what I'm going to need because of all, all of the, uh, the, the prices that are being raised because of gas prices. So, so here we are again. I mean, these things happen. And in all those years that you were there, and all those years that the former council was there, or the former board members, it, 
Every year, it just continued to get worse. Nobody. That's no not worse. so. so no, no, you listen. can say five thousand times. That's not so. The to money say. was not cut when it was broke down. The politicians make deal. The money wasn't cut. Okay. What you were now were part. You're putting that budget in deficit, you don't know what the hell is going on here. I'm not you're the French. I don't know why you why you have to go after your own personal things. You do that a lot. You really well, do. I never go after your personal that's things. That's not personal. personal business. That's not personal. That's your business thing. And you know, I objected to hiring you I did. because yeah. you had a deficit when you were a superintendent at Elmwood Park. You objected to hiring me because of, of, of four different reasons you got it for. You didn't, exactly. didn't know who I was. Didn't talk about anything <laughs> academically except and, that. And, and I was. And business and business. I all politics. I was correct on everyone. I guess so. That's your opinion. That's and now you prove me correct again. We don't need all this stuff. We need you to concentrate our education on yeah. children. It's a disgrace. Your test scores in gender are a disgrace. That's your primary job. As a councilman, as a, as a councilman here, here but as a councilman here on your watch, these facilities were deplorable. There was no free preschool. Most of the districts that you always cite that have high test scores all have preschool. We finally now, for the first year, will have close to 90% of the preschool universe. When I got here, it was 8%. Okay? So that means that we're not even looking at students until they're in second grade. That's too late because research tells us that if you can't read and comprehend reading by third grade, there's a, there's a very big correlation between that and graduating high school. So, again, before I got here, before we started talking about putting a preschool together, which the only place I could find was where we found that we all got fought on on that too. Now we have a beautiful building and we have almost 90% preschool universe that I would say that after I'm gone, these scores are going to skyrocket. And, and you'll be paying for it. And the landlord did the hell out of it. The landlord who you're making a millionaire is opening up his facility in Leonard. Listen to me. Right across the river. I don't know. The taxes are lower. So you're making him rich and he's leaving Bell. Mr. Fantoni, you're, you're a business person in town too. If your place opened up and I could, and I could utilize it, I would, I would go to you for it. What would people say? It's not a purpose. Oh, I know it's not. Don't rent it. If you own something, I, I can't buy back the school in one property. 1.68. You will see very soon how all of this comes together when when something is purchased. We'll see very soon. And when you're gone before the end of these leases, we'll see how we get in serious financial trouble. I don't think it's going to happen. So, but thank you. Anybody else? Smignon. Yes, sir. Okay, so then, I mean, if, if, if you built this to what it's supposed to be, then, and, you know, say you, you can't sustain it. You know, Correct. You couldn't sustain it. What is, is it something that you can then sell, like, as a business? No. Because you have the whole facility already done, or, like, you know, kind of like... So, in five years at the lease... Like sell the business kind of thing, not sell the leasing space, but sell, like, the business, because it's, like, all, all, all built up, you put everything... Is that something that's possible? Probably is possible. I mean, we could run it as a, as a business through. We, we do have that in the lease that we can rent out space and, and take in uh, um, donations, etc. But the whole idea is that right now, the, the, as in all of our leases, the, the owner does all of the renovations, like the HVAC and whatnot, and that's, that's part of the lease agreement. So that when we vacate, if we do vacate at some point, um, it's still their property, but everything inside is ours. So if we did leave, we would take the turf, we would take the the dance floor, we would take the uh, the treadmills and all the other stuff. So that, that's how it works. Okay. All right. So just to give the other you know side of what Mr. Carrington told me said, um, I'm not a Belmont resident, but I'm 23 years in the district, so it's like my second home. But I am a coal law, um, uh, resident, and uh, we had a community center there for years. Um, but the current um, municipality did not want to burden, like Mr. Frantoni, did not want to burden the taxpayers on it. So it was all membership type of thing. Now all it had in it was a nice basketball court, a swimming pool that was utilized by the high school swimming team, and then a little weight room in the bottom of it, and a huge parking lot, and you know all that. And, uh, and they couldn't sustain it through membership money anymore. So now we have a um, parking lot that's that's now just rubble, okay, because they had to tear it down because it, was, it wasn't built properly, and then emptied, abandoned uh, a building because it wasn't, it wasn't going to be possible to sustain that through membership money from the, from the, um, uh, from the residents. 
And now the swim team has no more to swim. So now they had a swimming pool that they were utilizing, now they don't. And, um, and then our kids, who, you know, my son, I have two teenagers. They used to go there and play basketball in the wintertime, right? And, you know, hang out and play basketball. And, and then it was, you know, the men's leagues too. Sure. So you complain about that because there's men's leagues, they can't play all the time. But there's somewhere for them to go. Now we have all over Facebook, which I'm not, but my wife is on Facebook. All over Facebook, all the parents complain. Oh, there's kids in the middle of the street all the time. And, well, where are the kids supposed to go? Like, I mean, that's a great spot for them. And as far as education is concerned, and I'm a big advocate of education, but I'm also a big advocate of, of wellness and, and, and health. And I think that that whole, you know, athletic, athletic is, is, is the same with music and the arts, uses a different part of your brain. And it helps you, helps kids to be able to have that balance and be able to learn better in the classroom. So, I mean, you know, just thinking, I'm just trying to think of, from all aspects of it, that um, you know, kids do need somewhere to go. Um, they do need somewhere to be able to you know train and and even just like you said, just work out or 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 just you know have someone to play with their friends or um, and they need that to get off of those phones yep. because those phones are not going to help them learn. It's not. It's just going to be something a video they're going to look at. I have a problem with my kids on the same thing. Get off the phone and go outside and play, but there's really nowhere for them to go in this winter time. So. They used to go to the community center, now they don't. So just something to think about as we're, you know, here talking. I'm, you know, again, it is for the kids, so. Thank you. Mr. Sheldon. I, uh, I don't want to be redundant, but I do have a couple questions about the financial aspect of this project. First of all, do you have a tentative uh, start date? Are you planning to start using this in September? June. June. I'm sorry, July. July, July, July. Right. Um, you were asked earlier about the, the lease agreement. Um, you correctly said that the, the lease uh, was approved by the board in your January meeting. And I just you know, quickly want to just read, uh, I won't read the whole thing, but it just says that uh, uh, you're, you're entering into a five-year lease agreement with Portland Holdings LLC for 25,000 square feet uh, to be utilized as auxiliary athletic facility and school gym annex for five years at a price of $15 a square foot from February 1 of this year, 2022, through June 30th, 2022, then at a price of $20 a square foot from July 1st, 2022, through June 30th, 2023, and the remaining years with a 2% increase. So as Mr. Frantantoni uh, correctly cited, if you, if you assume that uh, you started the lease on February 1st, but now you're saying it may not have started until this month or or as of yesterday, or, or, but but uh, but assuming it was it started on February first as originally posted, um, the the total for the five year period does come to a little over two point two million dollars. Uh, so my next question is, uh, you said that this is going to be fully funded, or it's already it's in the budget. Uh, it won't uh, be any extra cost to Belvis taxpayers. From from what line item? Are you deriving the funds to uh, run this facility? I'm not going to answer that here, but if you if you want to talk about that, all of that conversation. So I, well, this I, meeting is not for that. So well, I would appreciate you know some answer at some point. You want to email or a separate? Yeah, I can say that. But I'd like to know you know exactly where because I it, correct me if I'm wrong. You can't use cap the, the, the capital nope. account for this because you're not actually acquiring property. So it has to general fund. Money. General fund. All right. All right. Yep. Um, the um, as far as the lease is concerned, uh, all of these lease agreements are always five years, and uh, I'm sure you know, uh, but I imagine most community members aren't aware of the fact that under state law, uh, any time a district has a lease of five years or less, it's really just the prerogative of the board to approve it. But the moment you go beyond five years, five years in a day, you have to have a, a public hearing for each lease agreement. Uh, so by having these five-year uh, lease agreements, you kind of s circumvent having extra community input or, or potential opposition to the lease agreement. That's why these, some, a number of people have asked me, why, why yeah. five years? What's the magic about five years? And I, that's yeah. the... So if I can answer that, because it's not accurate, really. I mean, it's accurate what you said, it's not true. So uh, I'm, I'm not worried about a public hearing, because obviously in this community, that's, you know, there, there's nothing to, to circumvent with, with uh, you know, um, with, uh, so, what we have at our meetings and what everybody's done their homework on, so it's not, they're not circumventing anything. 
the reality is that <clears throat> the, the, the smaller law or the, or the more simpler law with leases is that a board can't tie another board to a lease. So six years would tie, a, would have a, a one person on a three year term tie a second, a tie a second board to a full lease. That's basically, that's the, that's the, uh, the analysis that I use. So five years allows one board to do a full year, three years, and then a second board at some point in its reorganization of, a, of members, whether they're hired or not, can then um, choose not to right. renew the lease. So what I'm saying is when this lease is up, the board could, in effect, completely change. So we're not tying one board to another board's decision. So that, that's how that goes. Right. Um, as, as far as um, the, the equipment is concerned, I understand that that belongs to the, the district. No matter what happens down the road, if you have to pull out of this facility in five years, go to another location, all of the rowing machines, the weightlifting machines, everything, batting cages, it all gets ripped off of the walls, the ceilings, and gets loaded into two BOE trucks and moved right. somewhere else. That, that, that's a given. But the, the actual renovation of this facility to put in the bathrooms and showers and lighting and that's the responsibility of the owner, right? Mr. In this case, Mr. Stern. He's going to be the one building or renovating this to suit. Correct. All right. Uh, and uh, with the uh, the lease now effectively getting underway, uh, according to my calculations based on this agenda item, he's he's receiving roughly, uh, well, not roughly, it's exactly thirty one thousand two hundred fifty dollars a month. Uh, but you know, uh, prorated for this month because you're only you're halfway through. But for April, May, and June, he'll be getting thirty-one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars, and half, roughly half of that for this month. So it's, it's over a hundred thousand dollars. So I assume that effectively this advance lease payment uh, to Mr. Stern is so that he can absorb the cost of having to put in walls and lighting and bathrooms and plumbing. That is if he if he needs it, sure. Right. We we need to get our guys in there to lay the floor and all that other stuff. So. Oh, uh, so so uh, Mr. Henry and, and our our buildings and ground crew will be. They're going to be doing most of the work on the inside. They're going to be doing the the work, and <clears throat> so is Mr. Stern going to reimburse us for? No, because that's part of the equipment piece, like the turf and all that other stuff. Is, is ours. So okay. the actual facility, the walls, the bathrooms, the yeah. HVAC, all that is, yeah. the, is the builder's responsibility. Build, builders, all right. So, Mr. so we're talking about turf, yeah. um, the track, the wood panels. The, the agreement was that right. Mr. Stern would buy all those things and then we would, we would, we would install them right. through, through, the, through that rent money, right. the lease money. So, so Mr. Stern's people are doing the rough, the rough end. Whatever they're doing to his building, that's and why I don't touch those buildings. Mr. Henry and his crew will be doing the final. Right, he didn't know that until I just told him right now, but okay. he knows that. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna tell you tomorrow, Richie, but you know. And then I think lastly, my last question for tonight. Uh, the, the, the five year, these five year leases, uh, without going back and looking at the fine print of previous leases, these are always structured so that um, there are there's a possibility of five additional five-year renewals. Correct. So any lease agreement entered into right now theoretically could run 30 years if, if all the renewals Correct. are affected. Um, just if you know at the top, the, the renewal process, is that the prerogative of the board at that time, or is that up to the, the board. owner? The board has first right refusal. All right, they, all right, I just wanted to confirm mm -hmm. that. That's, that's to protect us so that the preschool building, for example, the owner can't come and say, we're done with preschool, we're, I'm putting a, something else here. Right. The owner, we have the first right to. All right, yeah. the owner himself or herself cannot toss the board to the, the curbside. Well, no, I, there, are, uh, there are things there that basically, you know, for bad tenants, you know, the oh, normal yeah, eviction stuff, right. but, but yes, for purposes of, after five years, when we go to Mr. Dorso, for lack of a better, right. you know, individual, since we all know that he owns that property, mm -hmm. we have the first right to say we want another five years. All right. So. And because of these commitments and all likelihood, barring some calamity, the right. likelihood these, these leases will outlive all of us uh, in this room. Well, specifically that one, if you want to talk about that one, I mean, that's a preschool that's funded by preschool education expansion, I'm sorry, preschool expansion aid. I don't see that going anywhere for a long time. I don't see anybody pulling out preschool from a, a township like this. Um, maybe other aid, it's a different story. Uh, so according to you know what happens down the road a little bit, but we've seen that before. Governor Christie in January pulled everybody's reserve. I mean, I'm, I'm aware of all those things. 
Um, and I've lived through all those things, so I, so I know when to expect them and when not to, and that's why we're very careful with our reserves and what we spend them for. You know, the budget's very healthy. I mean, I think you'll see that in the next couple of weeks coming up. Um, we are still under adequacy, which I, I don't know how, but we are. Um, that's, a, that's a formula for the state. Um, but again, uh, a lease like the preschool lease is something that this community definitely needed. Um, and I can't see anybody pulling that out. But I do see reaping the benefits down the road long after, you know, it's, it's in place when these, when these preschool students are now graduating in 11 years. Um, you know, that's, that's where we're really going to see where they're going to school and, and how they're doing on SATs and stuff like that. Well, just my last closing comment. <laughs> uh, the suggestion I made earlier tonight uh, wasn't, simple, it wasn't some sort of off-the-wall thing about the community pool. You know, mm -hmm. I, for, for decades, I've heard so many residents uh, uh, beseech different governing bodies, please try to find a way. And of course, the, the answer is, was, well, we'd love to, but there's no space to be had in this, this district. And you have, you have a developer with apparently pretty deep pockets who's already on the hook. He has to, he has to build recreational space for the township. That's the, the people, the, the entity that's responsible for the warehouse under construction of Kitty site. So they, they, ha they have to help provide some recreational space. And I think if you, if you coordinate affairs and you have all these other uh, large sponsors uh, you know, with a little bit of work, uh, I think you, you might actually, you know, Mr. Stern doesn't have tenants already lined up elsewhere. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other space under that collective roof. More well, space enough, that Bob. Right, well, more than enough space to put in, in, a, in a pool. You're not very far off from some of the conversations that we've already had. So right, well, I will just say I appreciate your support on that be because it may come back around. It would be a win-win for, for everyone in this community. And uh, you know, long last, our kids would actually have, sure. have a, swim, a swimming program. And it would also you know, be a tremendous asset to, to this community. And I, I, I know a few uh, current board members have publicly uh, uh, asked to, to try to get a, a pool somewhere. One, one of your board members actually threw out the idea of using the great lawn here outside uh, mm -hmm. the high school to, to have a pool nope. there. Yeah. But that would be exposed to the elements, whereas this, this facility, you would have an indoor, year-round available pool with, I'm sure, you, even though the ceiling may only be 20 feet high, you could probably put in a diving platform, at least a, well, a, a modest one, for that as well, so if you would all the secrets out. If you're going, if you're really going to, you know, just kind of look out in the future about a possible pool or whatever, you know, the ceiling would be something that you would consider just to get in there anyway. So right. maybe to raise the ceiling there. Oh yeah, you did just that little area mm -hmm. of the, sure. the diving platform. You got to put a little, right. a little nice uh, uh, window or uh, oh, ceiling, ceiling light to, to, to listen. That'll be our next lighting. meeting. Our next stakeholder meeting. Make sure you mention the window. So. Oh. But yeah, thank you for that. I appreciate okay. that. Just remember you said that. So. I, always remember, <laughs> I know you do. I always remember what I said. I know you do. Okay. So thank you. Well, I appreciate everybody coming tonight. Thank you so much. I'm going to be here if you want me to, uh, if you want to ask me any questions or have any more comments. Thank you very much. Anything else you'd like to send us, email superintendent at bellaschools.org. Um, and good night. Thank you for coming. Drive safely. Appreciate it.